Shake, 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 Loki. I hear you. <laughs> he wants to come on camera. I'm like, no, this this is not your time. Yeah. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to our lovely Jane Austen July themed sitting room. If you hadn't cottoned on already, like this is a Jane Austen July <laughs> get up. And uh, we're here to do some product productivity sprints. So my name is Margaret Pernard. You're on my channel. You're very welcome. Uh, Nia, can you introduce us to your channel name and general vibe of your channel? Sure. I'm Nia the Vixen of Fiction. I'm on YouTube and occasionally on Twitch. I do author tube slash book tube. I love to um, do reviews. I have a book club called Scripting the Book. At the end of the month, we are doing Emma and Clueless, so it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I do productivity sprints on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. If you're a night writer or a reader and would like to get things done at night, you can join us for that. And then this Saturday, we're doing Author Tubers React, which I do where we talk about all of the things that are going on in the bookish and writer communities. So you can join me for any of these lives or watch my random videos of me vlogging with my with my puppy Loki, who wants to play right now. He's actually, um, he likes the camera. He knows when it's on and he wants to get up on my He's like shining on the camera, totally. He is really any, is. Is there any of this happening on AuthorTubers React? <laughs> tea? There might be a little tea. Oh, Oh my gosh, the doggy sweater, the doggy sweater. Yes, he loves his clothes. He realizes that, okay, we're on camera. Yes, we are. Now, can you go play? Go ahead. Can we switch? We're going to talk. You're going to go play. Swish. All right. Hopefully it'll be okay in the corner. All good. Yes, let me go bribe him with some treats. There you go. All right. Well, let's welcome everyone. So Jenna, the solo writer, was here early to say hello. hello. Hit the like button. Thank you, Jenna. Claude is here to oh, say hello. Hi. Anita, AF Stewart, Michael CB Chen. Hey, guys. Cool gamer. Hummily Webshop. That's a new one. Loki oh, deserves the camera time, says <laughs> Claude. <laughs> Don't tell Loki that. He will sit here on my lap in the camera the whole time. <laughs> hey, Esther. I know. Bean is... Bean is camera shy, so I have a cat, and he's over there doing his typical sleep through the day routine, so there's no hope of getting him. Whenever I get him on camera, it's for a fleeting second, and then he launches off, and usually I get claw marks for my trouble, so, you yeah. know, we're avoiding that today. I think we got a vanishing tail last time. Yeah. Like, Loki, they're polar opposites. Loki's like, give me the camera, and your, dog, your cat's like, get away. Yeah. Like, I love it. I love it when I, we have people who have like tails who like yes. <laughs> on by. I'm like, that's hilarious. I don't have that set up. I wish I did where I had like a desk where he could walk over. That'd be fun. That'd be you gotta, really fun. gotta bribe him. Bribe him with something. So Esther's just coming by to say hello. Yes. Like button watching Thelma's interview. Yes, we're going to do that on our sprint. So for the first sprint, it's not going to be flash fiction. We're going to just allow people to do what they want. We'll save the flash fiction part for the end because I am anxious to watch it as well. Um, unfortunately, I had this scheduled before they decided which day. So I'm trying to do both at once, but obviously honoring my hosting capabilities, hosting yes. duties first and foremost. Yes. Yes. All right. So anyone else who's joined us, tell us what you're reading today, what you're working on today. And um, we can jump into a sprint in a couple minutes. Let me get a timer up and ready. Um, do I want to try a fancy timer or do I just want to stick to the scroll like I usually do? It's up what to do you. Think? I'm down for anything. I'm down for anything. Um, right. Let's see. I'm going to be reading Emma. I'm on my Emma reread. So I should be wrapping that up today. Oh, yep. I should be wrapping that up today. Ooh, okay. And, um, then I need to write my, I'm working on a contemporary slash historical fiction uh, Vela. So I need to get some words on that because I've got to hit my word count goal for today. Nice. Me too. Haven't done any words. was talking to the chimney doctor earlier. So again, like <laughs> um, <laughs> is 20 minutes good amount to start? That's a good start. Yes. Okay. So we'll start this in just one minute. Um, 
Anita was working on formatting in an earlier sprint, but may get some exercise in. Well, that's always good. Writers yes. always need that balance. Oh, in case you're wondering what Esther is referring to. So we have at A Mighty Blaze, which is a volunteer author show, corn, corn something group <laughs> um, that hosts author interviews eight times a week sometimes. Uh, we have a show called Authors Love Bookstores, where an author picks a special bookstore to highlight and a bookseller and the author get to chat about bookselling and author life, which is great. And the hosts have tried to do all 50 states for bookstores, and they had not gotten Puerto Rico yet. And so I have some friends from BookTube in Puerto Rico, and they know bookstores there. So I thought, let's bring this together. So I kept shoving their name, the bookstore's name over in their direction. And then they actually contacted Dama Llanos Figueroa. So that is happening right now as we speak. And oh, definitely is there, go over. Is there a link for us so we can watch it during the sprint? I will go pick up the link and pop it in the chat. Um, yes, so we can watch it during the sprints, or That's you can. Very exciting that they made it to Puerto Rico. Yes. Okay. So you can um, hit the watch later as well if you want. If you want to get the words in, Claude's going to be reading a bit. Currently reading Barry Reese, The Adventures of Lazarus Gray, Volume Two. I don't awesome. know. Um, Sounds good. Sounds good. Adventures are always good, right? Yes. And I'm always intrigued whenever someone uses the name Lazarus. I don't know why. That just always intrigues me. True. That is an interesting choice. All right. So let's go ahead and start sprinting at eight minutes after the hour for 20 minutes. I'll set a timer on or keep checking and we'll see you in a few. Right. Myself will be back in 20.
and time. <laughs> There's no thunder. There's no alarm. There's no tweeting birds. It's just me whispering creepily from the back of your screen. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back. We just had our first 20 minute sprint. How did you do? Um, I know I saw people uh, over in the Mighty Blaze slot um, watching Dalma Llanos Figueroa's talk, but if you are working on reading, how far did you get? Are you liking it? Yes, no. Um, if you're stopping in to give us a like, much, much appreciated. Let's visit the chat. Nia, how did you get along with Emma? I have a lot to go. You said you're about to wrap it up, and I'm not yet to halfway. I'm I'm right I'm right at halfway. So I still have quite a bit to go, but I think I can do it tonight. Because it's all a reread. And you know, rereads tend to go a little bit faster. So I'm like wondering if there's anything I'm gonna pick up that I that I maybe have missed. Um so I'll probably because I don't go to bed till like two, so so yeah, yeah I'll probably... I, I remember reading this in high school and like, you know, doing all the textual metaphors and like uh, lit literature stuff, but I'm going through it now. And there are lots of things where I'm like, that's not clear. That's not written very clearly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so I am, uh, I, this might be downgraded to like my least favorite. We'll have to see when we get Ooh. to scripting the book. Um, very so interesting. Yes, yeah, so we had the link if anyone wants to put that on their watch or later list for sure. Um, she's a Puerto Rican author that's writing historical fiction. So if you like us, historical fiction and fantasy authors, you will probably like the line if you're ready for something very, you know, heavy, deep and emotional um, of her, her books. So there you go. Just Eva dropped in. Love the outfit. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, RK Sibling Mirror. Hello, Rachel. Uh, also, a new Jane Austen retelling historical fiction that came out this year is The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. Have you heard of this, Mania? Heard anything? I've heard about it, but I have not read it. So um, when is it coming out or did it just come out? It says came out this year. Okay. I think I've seen it on some posts about having been. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it too. So I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious. I haven't, haven't heard any like good or bad, just seen the cover. Bird stopped in. Love and support to two of my Yay. favorites. <laughs> Nailed it. I tried. We tried. Right? Yes. Do you have another um, tea time set up behind you? Your little tears? I do. I do. I have a little bit of chai. So I was vlogging also for part of that. Um, ah. I have the same cookies that I'm oddly addicted to that I'm still not sure if I like okay. what it is about them. And then I have the cookies that I love. Those are the butter, the butter cookies are, are nice. yummy. And then I've got a couple of cookies. They're doggy cookies for a low key. Oh, right. And Treat I've got my little right cookies. Right. Nothing in here. It's literally there just for the aesthetic. Okay. All right. <laughs> but I do have my, I do have my chai, which I'm halfway done with. Because it's addicting. Excellent. We all stand a chai tea. I mean, I stand a chai tea. I don't know about the audience. Yes. Uh, I put the poll up so we could start gathering information. Um, it's about the villains. So let me just, um, so Anita commented, she voted, but as I am currently reading Mansfield Park, I would argue Mrs. Norris should be on that list. So let's go ahead and sneak Mrs. In. Norris was pretty, was pretty rotten. Let's see. But I don't even know if she knows that she was rotten, you know? No, what was I gonna do? I was going to. Oh, she doesn't. But that's not a requirement of a villain, right? Well, I feel like Lady Catherine knows. She's like in a like Lady Catherine is like a whole nother level. She's like, I know I'm a boss and nobody can tell me anything. And I, I feel like she knows that she's rude to people, but that she's entitled to be rude. Where Mrs. Norris, Aunt Norris, I think that's literally just the way she is. I feel like she's like she's upholding to the standards of society. So she's just like, you're down here, they're up here. So I'm going to uphold this. And even if it makes her. you feel really horrible as a little child growing up in this household, I don't feel like she even understands how awful that is. It's just. Yeah. So an enforcer of strict social codes of like class separation is like, did you watch Downton Abbey? Parts of it, yes. I did not watch the 
uh the, any of the new stuff. ones yeah no no the earlier series the nanny for the two kids in the nursery who like talks really up to one and down to the other because mm -hmm. one is the chauffeur's daughter and one is like the lord's daughter or whatever and she gets fired because the grandmother overhears and it's like that's a villain but that's a minor villain because it's just an enforcer of class rules that's actually being exposed and like laid out for all to see yeah but really that's how everyone operates right yeah but yeah. Anita, point taken. Point taken. Yes, he was pretty bad. I mean, there's no getting around it. That was awful. Yeah. So who and I think we have train? Lucy Steele on here because I think Lucy was shady as hell. I mean, I'm going to like do one of these. They're like, what is the Lucy? Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Forbes. Ooh. So then we have brother sister. We have two brother sister pairs that are like mm -hmm. agents of chaos. So if Richard wanders in and sees this, like <laughs> not harmless, not harmless agents, very harmful. Mm -hmm. So that's what the poll is up on YouTube. Feel free to weigh in with your opinions. Um, I'm gonna leave it up for a second while I go back here um, to the comments. We had Anita. I, I, I just voted. Cool. Oh, yes. And I was going to, this is my reminder. So I'm also reading Emma, as I said, a little behind uh, Nia here. But one of my um, forays here in California was a new bookstore. Surprise, surprise. You know, don't, don't faint anybody. Um, down in Santa Barbara called Chaucer's. And I found this book by one of my favorite authors. It's called Jane oh. and the Waterloo Map by Stephanie oh. Barron. Oh, that's and, pretty. Yeah, where's her name? Her name isn't on the cover. That's weird. Okay, it's on the side. <laughs> and it's like foil, so it's hard to see. But anyway, Stephanie Barron. And um, there's like 15 in the series. And she's, I mean, she's getting to the end of her known life. So Jane Austen as a detective is, is coming to a close. And I just don't want to let it go. I've got oh. two. It sounds like you're listening to Jane Austen speak when you're reading it. It's so marvelous. So, highly recommend um, in terms of spinoffs. Um, what's the blurb quote? There was a there was a perfect. Um, there we go. The Boston Globe. Great fun for readers who long ago ran out of Jane Austen novels. So, if you have run out of the originals and you don't want to reread, like Stephanie Barron is where it's at. <laughs> All right. I'm going to definitely check that out. And it's a pretty book. So if I like it, it's going to go on my bookshelf. You know how I am. Yes. <laughs> it's such a pretty book. There's a lot. And I would recommend going in order for these because there's an arc that you don't want to spoil before you get okay. to it. So I would recommend starting at the beginning. They're very good. She started in like the 90s and she's a former CIA analyst. So she's like very good at plotting and foreshadowing in a subtle way and humor and like anyway really we just is. keep fangirling here yeah uh, all right nick dropped in hey nick hello oh thank you nick hope you're both doing well today i'm doing exceedingly well thank you sir <laughs> yes we're having a lovely day yes that's shy. I've just got um, regular black tea from the co-op, so they don't they don't put a name on it. Uh, bad YouTube. We need at least six villains. I know. Yes, it's so not fair. Eva's hanging out while working on some other things. Excellent. Rachel, book came out in May. Just heard about it. Awesome. That's. I mean, coming out in May with Jane Austen July is is pretty good timing. That is great timing. <laughs> I need to go a nice virtual walk through Bali during the. I first. love those virtual walks. What is that? Is that an app or? A um, video? The ones that I watch, there are people who um, record themselves walking through cities all over the country, all over the world. Um, so I watch those, and they're really cool. Is it of them like a GoPro or is it like them just holding the camera? Yeah, like a GoPro around? or a camera. Yeah. Not of them. They're literally, it's of where they're going. So the camera's okay. in front of them. So if it's a GoPro, then it's not, they're not recording themselves. They're recording where you're walking. 
And it's not narrated. It's just like the actual. Um, sometimes, sometimes they they talk. Sometimes they say this is this way, this is that way. It depends on who who's doing the video. There's I there's several people that I've seen doing them. So it just depends. Some people are it's completely silent, and some people are like this is this street, that's that street. We're walking down this way, mm -hmm. um, and then they'll they'll turn the camera. If you go down there, that's this road. If you go down there, that's that road, and then they just keep going. Interesting. But some are completely silent. Just depends on if you find someone that you like or or I wonder if this is for research, Anita, or whether you just needed a break and like we're like, yes, Bali. Yes, take me there. <laughs> <laughs> Comely Web Shop, reading the Chase of the Golden Meteor by Jules Verne. Sounds like a classic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never heard of that one. So that's like a book we've never heard of, maybe. So you've come to the right channel. Ah, uh, she's doing it for Serenity. Nice. Well done. Snaps for that. Well done. All right. So while we await the results of that poll, I'll go ahead and pull that down. Oh, what is behind us? I had a different background. Let's put that up. There we go. Ooh, that's that's me Ooh. of the counties and Hampshire. So, yeah, mm -hmm. rolling. The lovely hills. Um, what else have we got for today? We could do another sprint. Um, I was gonna put up coming attractions. You mentioned that you're doing certain sprints, and I was gonna use this as my reminder to pop the links in the chat. So go ahead and I'll do that part. <laughs> so we've got our next sprint on your channel Wednesdays, same time. Mm-hmm. And which poll do you have for the last week? I'm going to do um, best sister and bad best friends. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> There's always some overlapping. So you, you, you might see some bad best friends on this poll. Nice. <laughs> because Jane was very good at, at doing that. Yes, the fake, fake friend. Yeah, that fake friend. Me. Who needs enemies when you have friends like these kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, and then I was going to point to this. Uh, if anyone comes to the Voltron Force Productivity Sprints, those are once a month on a Sunday with uh, Shay with the Hobbies, Sandy Golson, BookTube TV, and Steph from Coffee Over Apples. But she's been um, out the past couple because of some difficult times she's going through. But we keep her on the thumbnail because we are a fabulous foursome. Um, Who's channel so are you on this one? What's that? Whose channel is it going to be on this time? It's mine. On yours. Okay. It's on my awesome. channel. Yes. My turn. So yes. um, we'll see you all 4 p.m. Sunday Pacific time. So that's going to be fun. Sounds good. Yep. And <laughs> this is my question for today. So besides the poll on the villains, this is my like question because I was feeling... Well, I was feeling rather like a Miss Bates this weekend, <laughs> so <laughs> not great. Um, but if anyone has a particular identification or a like, mood indicator, which Austin character do you feel like today? But I'd sneak that in. Do you have one, Nia? Hmm. I... Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I need to just cut out. I have got the wrong link. Um, let me go back and find it. And if you just feel like yourself, that's perfectly fine too. Yeah, I feel like myself, but I'm feeling like, hmm. Since we're both reading Emma, that's why the the Bates. Came I know. Up. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling like those characters are in my head, but I don't feel like I'm feeling any of those <laughs> right now. Yeah. Um, like <laughs> it's funny how often I have to keep rereading um, the introduction of characters because the family relationships are so like ingrown. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Like. Uh, she knows Mr. Knightley because her sister married his brother and she knows uh, what 
what's his face, uh, Churchill, because his grandfather married her best friend. And she knows Jane Fairfax because these annoying ladies are her grand grandmother and aunt. And you're just like, everyone is related. It just makes it so awkward. <laughs> like, it really does. <sighs> I don't know. I think maybe I'll call myself an Eleanor. I feel like I'm taking care of everybody today. I'm taking care of Loki. I took my daughter to the doctors earlier. So I'm like, I'm, I'm feeling that Eleanor um, from Sense and Sensibility caregiver, kind of right. taking care of the family, kind of, kind of vibe today, I guess. Good deal. All right. We ready for another sprint? Sure. Yep. I can get some more reading done. I don't know. I might switch over to writing just so that I have that security of knowing that I got those words. I know. I know. The day can go really fast. And then you're like, wait, um, what was I supposed it's to do? It's almost night. Let me get the, yeah. get the writing in. Because the reading, I literally, I, I have quite a while to finish the reading. So it's not like it has to be done today. I just wanted it like that checklist, you know? Yeah. I like to have the little things checked off all right it's another 20 minute sprint all right sounds good a minute and pop that up and yeah i'll mute myself and be back in 20 to verify that you're all working on something <laughs> good luck
boom. <laughs> I'm not good at doing that on my own. Anyway, we're at five minutes after the hour. So our sprint is over. I did some reading then. So we finished up um, the interview on a mighty blaze, which I saw Nia weighed in on as well. Yes. And how'd you do reading? I did good. I did good. Blazing through another chapter. It's fun. I love the babes. I've just gotten to the moment where Frank Tur Churchill has arrived. Oh, that's what things so really getting exciting. <laughs> Scoundrel. Scoundrel. I know. <laughs> I know we're supposed to be rooting for him and, and Jane, but still. Mm. It took me a while to figure out like how they were relating it in Clueless. Like I, this is the like, preview of our scripting the book discussion on the 31st of July on Nia's channel. But um, I was like, Christian Churchill. Okay. And he's not available. Okay. <laughs> it was right. Taylor, Ty. Nope. Taylor is Taylor, the best friend. And Ty is, uh, how does Ty the name? correlate to Harriet Smith. I don't, I don't know. But um, yeah, there's lots of interesting correlations with Clueless. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, okay, so I finally popped in the, the correct link for the Wednesday Sprint next week. Thank you for alerting to me that, Anita. Uh, and it looks like if we want to do a flash fiction at the end, it's going to be like the fastest fa flash <laughs> fiction <laughs> sprint ever. <laughs> Super Yeah. Um, Esther saying, thank you for letting me know about Domino's interview. It was lovely. Yay. Gary Thomas is stopping in. Nice to see you, friend. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, yeah, usually authors love bookstores pairs them with a bookseller, but maybe it was like a bad timing for anyone in Puerto Rico. Who knows? Here was my question. I don't know. I don't know how many stories in a collection is like realistic or the right sizing, you know? Yeah. Hmm. So I was thinking of trying to get two more done before the end of the month. We'll see. Do it. <laughs> Gary's I'm saying, I need to channel Jane Austen for my romantic comedy script. Mm -hmm. I didn't pick up that he said script the first time. Um, interesting. Like screenwriting? And I assume if dressing up would help because, you know, get into the mindset. I think so. Get a little get up going, get those yes. vibes. Yeah, yeah. Melissa stopped in. Perfect for Jane awesome. Austen reading. Uh, Michael C.B. Chen said yes, for sure. Two short stories is doable. Um, and then I'm not sure what this is referring to. <laughs> um. Anita read some more in Mansfield Park. Still want Mrs. Norris pecked to death by a chicken. <laughs> oh, I feel that, Anita. I feel it. Yes. Oh, gosh. Two more stories. Mm -hmm. Good, good. I have six so far. I just finished the sixth one yesterday, so I'm thinking like eight is a good number to work with. Yeah. Varying lengths. Yeah. Digging the hat. Thank you. I was about to take it off. I don't know. It's cute, though. I'm feeling it. I like yeah. it. And I love the outfit. Thank you, Gary. I think I'm going to reprise this for the scripting the book so that we can Ooh, be like in nice. the mood. Yeah. Yes. Do it. <sighs> Should we close the poll? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see what everybody said. Let's see the results here. Um, where'd it go? It's up at the top. End poll. See what it does down at the bottom should be down at the bottom right where did they put the results come on youtube get your shit. i can see them <laughs> can you see them there yeah. it is okay 83 percent lady catherine 16 percent the crawfords all right and lucy Steele, and the thorps are getting a pass this time i mean when you put lady catherine in there like, I think she just dominates as. Yeah. So one of the other books that I read for Jane Austen in July from Libro.fm was Pride by E.B. Zaboy. Have you heard of that mm -hmm. one? Yes, I have heard of it. 
And the Lady Catherine in that one is is not as severely drawn, I would say. It's someone who lives in Chevy Chase, Maryland, who can code switch slightly. And you only get like a brief, a brief time with her. So it didn't have the overwhelming, the gods have descended to talk with us kind of feeling yeah. of the adaptations or the book. Um, so I think it would depend on, I guess, the, the adaptation or the retelling because Lady Catherine has many interpretations for, mm -hmm. for people. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like when you when you attack our Lizzie by calling her obstinate, headstrong girl, you're kind of like, you're going down, lady. We don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she basically just repeats what Darcy says at the beginning about mm -hmm. connections and intemperateness and all these sorts of things. Esther says, I don't know the characters, but Lady Catherine sounded like a villain. <laughs> Melissa says, I was 50-50. Oh, let me pop it up. Sorry. Um, I was 50-50 on Lady Catherine and the Thorpes, but I went with Lady Catherine because I'm only halfway through Northanger Abbey. Ah. So I need to finish the book so I can better judge the villainy. Love it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the okay. Thorpes were bad, uh, particularly the brother, because I feel like a lot of the things that he was doing was very intentional, mm -hmm. um, where his sister may have had some naivety in there. Um, well, but, yeah, but the brother was definitely he was he was. Uh, yeah, he was definitely definitely both brothers, big. both brothers. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, there's one innocent brother, but there's two brothers in there that are villains. So, yeah. She likes sibling relationships. I mean, I guess growing up with eight siblings in the house, Jane Austen had a view on that. Lady Catherine is in the continuation I'm reading to the clergyman's wife, continuation mm -hmm. of Charlotte's story. Oh, cool. Nice. Um, and if we're talking about continuations and spinoffs, let me just pump Jane and the Waterloo map as my most recent spinoff purchase by Stephanie Barron. Love it. Great series. And which book did you say that one was? Which Which one is that? Which number? number? Yeah. Um, it doesn't have numbers on the side. Um, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 before. So this is 13. Ooh, yeah. And I, I didn't read uh, 11 or 12. The last one is Jane and the Madness of Lord Byron. Because it's one of those like... You wait until you uh, you really need something to pull you out of the funk, and then you're like, okay, I guess I'll go through one of my favorite authors' series books because you, okay. you can only read them first once, you know? Yeah, that first time. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> yes. John, right? Is it John Thorpe? I think. Yeah, I think I I think I put him as one of my was he one of my rakes i think he was one of my i think so because we were talking a little bit about oh no we were talking about the crawfords and how like the brother might have been a good guy if fanny had reformed him and man yeah or that's what they said what yeah that's what their thoughts were. right so there's like the on the surface and like, well, were they even scheming at that level? Like you never know. So mm -hmm. maybe he he might have had a conversion moment if only Fanny had decided differently. But you know what? It's not up it's, to the woman yeah. to change you. Yeah. <laughs> it's not her. It's not her. What she's supposed to do. If he's going to be a good guy, he needs to do that on her on his own with or without Fanny. You know, I some I feel more like true colors came came shining through as the, as the song says but yeah, yeah. not it's in a good way trolls. well the, the the version i'm thinking of is from trolls right <laughs> good song good song yes. um yeah good deal all right so we've got about 15 minutes left from our time because you need a dinner break before you hop on to jc's yes. channel right yes i do all right, so um, do we want to pop into a 10-minute flash fiction sprint? Sure, let's okay, do Okay, so this is like the, the game part of the uh, sprint period. So for our final little mini sprint, we're going to do a flash fix fiction session where we're going to 
ask you to take one of the main six novels of Jane Austen and match it with a way to tweak it, right? So last um, last week I did, what did I do? <laughs> I don't even remember because I didn't finish it. Um, yeah. I know, I think I did Pride and Prejudice and made it a thriller and, or but then I realized I wish I had done North Anger Abbey and made it a thriller, which is something right. I actually might actually do because I liked it. Okay. Um, because I was like having the house trying to trying to kill Elizabeth, and I was like, I don't think I like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes it would make more sense if it was if it was North Anger Abbey. So I don't know. Hmm. What I did was Persuasion and Sequel and Neurodivergent. So I'm not going to be as ambitious this time. <laughs> Let's just try one, one mashup here. And so we'll go from 16 to 26 to have a little time at the end to close out here. Whew. All right. So there's your assignment. Should you choose to accept it or you could just continue with whatever you're doing, but we're just going to have a little fun here and start now.
Did I miss my cue? I did. A minute over. But I was just getting good. <laughs> okay, so we only have a few minutes left, and I did want to discuss the movie. Did you see it, Nia? Yes. Of course you did. <laughs> yes, I saw it. Um, how did you do on the flash fiction? I know that was very short, but did you want to share? I wrote a quick synopsis, nothing, nothing big, but just jotted down the idea. So my idea is Mansfield Park in the Roaring Twenties. Um, instead of a sugar, instead of the Bertrams owning a sugar plantation, the Bertrams are in politics. But Sir Bertram is illegally selling alcohol to the United States, which U.S. was going through prohibition at that time. Mm -hmm. He's making a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Fanny does not think it's right. But Edmund reminds her that they're all living off the profits. Um, and Fanny is not a first cousin, more like a third. Okay, good. <laughs> You're going to resolve that like a weird vibe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I went more in your direction and I combined Mansfield Park with a thriller. And so mm -hmm. I just have a few paragraphs, so I'll just read that. The firecrackers and released doves and flowers had piqued the curiosity of the whole neighborhood. Everyone was in everyone else's pockets already on Sith Row, and the chance to share happy news rather than sad had all the sailors' wives in a tizzy. But the prices had kept a firm stance. The door was locked and barred, which didn't prevent someone from without the neighborhood observing said fireworks and becoming curious as well. Later that night, as Fanny tossed and turned, muttering, muttering angrily to herself and freezing out her sister's kind in inquiries, a shadow detached itself from the wharf wall and climbed into their garden. Once the shriek went up, Mr. Price went running for his fouling piece to defend the honor of his house. Unfortunately, his dignity was not included as the flapping nightshirt stood testimony to. He rushed out after the retreating shadow in the alley. Stop, scoundrel, was followed by, is everyone all right? when no help was forthcoming. He's gone off with the savings, John. Fanny's little brother heard that, the look on his wee face painful to see, and took off running in his own nightshirt. His four-foot frame was, and that's as far as I go, <laughs> thriller writer, right? Can't you just see yeah. the future of that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Good job. Uh, I was like, how do I turn this into a thriller? Okay, we'll make it into a, a robbery. I don't know. Yeah. Fun. Okay, so what did you think of Persuasion 2022 on Netflix? Um, I did make a video of with my first impressions. I left oh. one of my first impressions off, um, so I'm gonna. I have to go back and like add that in. But I wanted to get my thoughts out before I watched everybody else's videos. Oh, and I I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. You know what I mean? There yeah. were part, there were things about it that were that I liked. A lot of the side characters were great. They're just not very much of any of the side stories, which I was like, ah, that was right. that. Yeah, right. so that was that was not not a good choice. I think it was too short because, um, especially with the side characters being such strong actors, I you I felt like I wanted them more, and the chemistry was good at the beginning. The opening scene I remember thinking oh that opening scene look at them together and then it just kind of like the chemistry kind of got a little awkward and I'm like I want that chemistry from the opening scene where's that where's that yeah yeah <laughs> so it had its ups and downs I didn't hate it like I, I feel like some people hated it and then some people were like yeah it wasn't that bad what is everybody complaining about so right no what right. did you think I thought the construction was a bit weird. And when I've been listening to other people's takes on it, that has been their take as well. So yeah, what I thought was so glaring of a weird choice was like, there's no uh, Mary Louisa tension about the suitor and like, which one's going to have who at the beginning, which was weird. Cause that was the motivating force. There was yeah. no Miss Smith. So there was no side plot about the, you know, fortune hunting, which was also weird. The, the conversation that prompted the letter was moved, so there was no motivating force for that. So it felt like they kept a lot of the things that were highlights, but without the sort of push to make them happen. Yeah, it was not, just sort not of the weird. Context. Yeah, 
and you're right, the side characters were hilarious. They did their jobs well. They understood the assignment, but that took that took the oomph out of the main storyline. It just seems sort of weird. Yeah. 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 And I that was my main takeaway is that some of the writing choices weren't the best. Like <laughs> I'm like, you should have focused more on give us more of these things. And it was really short, mm -hmm. which might be I I'm wondering if an extra 20 or 30 minutes, which the other ones were, or some some of the other adaptations are two hours. When you're trying to fit it into a movie, you need to make it a longer movie. A miniseries usually works great because you have two to six episodes to get it all in right i just felt like they were leaving too much stuff out there was just too yeah. much left out when the side actors were good yeah it was, it was weird. I was just like oh no i was like it just it just fell short and yeah so yeah but it wasn't horrible i i like some people were like oh my gosh it shouldn't have been made yeah. it, was so horrible. it didn't it didn't bring like, me it, wasn't bad. it wasn't that bad <laughs> calm down <laughs> Uh, if you're up, if you don't have anyone in your uh, subscription list who has reaction videos, although Nia's coming out with one soon, it sounds like, um, I would definitely recommend Lena Norms. She's a big, um, started out as a booktuber, has, has branched out into other stuff as well. She's fabulous. She has a very uh, focused and hilarious take on Netflix persuasion, which I thought was spot on. So, um, so Anita gave the flash fiction a shot. Way to go. Anita with the steampunk and Pride and Prejudice. Interesting. Uh, Mr. Bingley has an airship. I love <laughs> it. it. <laughs> That's impressive. Oh, glad you like my little flash fiction start there. Uh, Gary Thomas remembered, I did see the latest version of the film. Emma quite enjoyed it. Yeah, I've been I've been popping those up in my like for not for you page. That's that's TikTok. Uh recommended on youtube mm -hmm. and so i've watched scenes and like the the principal actors in the 2020 emma are, they look weird to me <laughs> so, like, it's that. some interesting choices again i don't i didn't hate it but i can understand why some people were like what's happening here right um, but i i always say but i tend to like adaptations because even if it's not great i like to see what somebody else thought and what they thought was important to bring to the screen or or mm -hmm. you know to the retelling of their book so I tend to like them so you have a little bit of a curve up whenever I'm whenever I'm yeah. judging because I'm going grades to... on a curve good to know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> interesting okay um yeah there's there's a lot to go into there like the bloody nose like what oh that was so weird oh, was I'm so sorry weird. that was weird <laughs> Wait, what? Why did but I think I I think I heard that, that yeah, I think I heard that that actually happened, so they left it in. What? <laughs> like I, it's, I, I want to look that up now. I want to look that up now. I feel like they said that that's something that actually happened. Wow. Crazy. Crazy crazy. Yes. All right. Well, you have uh, another engagement over on author JC Carpenter's channel. So I, I do want to wrap this up and say thank you to everyone for coming to Sprint with us. This was lovely. I get to, you know, show off my little Jane Austen frock. Um, talk about Jane Austen. Always, always. Uh... Hey, Laura. Hi, Laura. Um, always a fun time to talk our one of our favorite authors. Yeah. Um, and in case you we're not here at the beginning. We've got one more Wednesday sprint on Nia's channel next Wednesday at 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern. And she's got a loads of other Jane Austen July themed content as well as AuthorTube and BookTube um, as well. So definitely hop on over there and subscribe. And have a lovely rest of the Camp Nano. I did not get any words in during that sprint, so I still have work to do today. <laughs> I got a few. I got a few. I got 124 because as soon as I wrote up my synopsis, I went right into, like, I literally wrote my synopsis on the bottom of my document. Oh, so nice. I go right back to it. So Someone's thinking. Someone's thinking. I was. I was like, I'm on it. <laughs> Amazing. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for coming by and have a great rest of your week. Bye, everybody.